I'm going to skip on now to a few quick hints then on uh, reaching out and engaging well with um, Hong Kong people. Um, and much of this we've covered already, so I, I think I'll be able to go through fairly speedily. Just pick up this green again, reaching out the mine. There we are. So eight hints I've got here. This started off as five hints, now it's eight hints. Um, first of all, to remind, this is when you're trying to, like, if you have no contact with Hong Kong people and you want to reach out, you want to tell them about what you're doing, you want them to make contact with you. So these are some of the things that I've collected from Hong Kong people and others in the discussion uh, that might help you with that. First of all, to be very aware of the anxiety about Chinese government surveillance. So giving people the opportunity to be anonymous, giving them an opportunity to use a pseudonym, for example, like that. Um, not requiring people to, to put their email details, which is a data protection issue anyway, of course. That is a very deep and constantly referred to point and concern, and it needs to be thought about in everything that you do. Uh, secondly, reaching out via Hong Kong organisations where there are trusted connections. And there are a large number of, of both, well, I'd, I'd say quite a large, certainly a growing number of, of both established chi uh, Hong Kong organisations and newer ones set up by people who've arrived in the past year or so, um, often making very good use of social media with, with as many as 800 to 2,000 people on their Facebook accounts, for example, like that. And most of the, well, all the organisations I've spoken to, maybe because they're speaking to people, are very keen to form partnerships with, with um, non-Hong Kong voluntary organisations and to share those contacts so that, that, so that they can help Hong Kong people access the services they need. Um, but it is about trust. It's very much about trust because there is a, you know, it, it, if they trust you, then they feel that they can pass on recommendation, that you're safe and you understand the issues people are facing, you understand the issues about the fear of surveillance, for example, um, and then that uh, they can start to act as a communication channel. However, it's equally important to go through connections which are not Hong Kong organisations. I mean, there are always many, many reasons that people don't want to turn to um, identity or, or same ethnicity organisations uh, for support. I mean, examples, very well known examples like women who, who or men who are facing domestic violence, where somebody has issues around sexuality. There's a great deal of stigma, I understand, uh, in the Hong Kong community amongst the Hong Kong population around mental health and going to ask for help with mental health. There may be all sorts of reasons that people don't want, or maybe they don't even know who they can trust in the population of Hong Kong people they're meeting. That is also something that people have, have quoted to me. I'll, um, so that, that uh, use of non-Hong Kong connections as well and some examples, for example, via the GPs. So GPs these days have their team of social prescribers. So you can make contact with the social prescribers and with the GPs identifying somebody who has, whether it's social needs or economic needs that they can't help with, they'll refer them to their social prescribing team. And if your social prescribers know about your organization, they can act as a channel to refer them through to you. Um, there's also, uh, people like uh, the children's schools, children's centres, sports clubs, after school clubs, for example, where um, the schools may be happy to pass on information that you've got. And if it's coming via school, the Hong Kong families may be more willing to trust it. The churches in London have become very active and very organised, set up very early to welcome Hong Kong people. Um, so this is partly in reaction to the problems around the Windrush, where the Christian church was also criticised quite heavily for not having been welcoming to Afro-Caribbean people arriving in the 50s and 60s. And so there's been a very active push amongst the churches, not just the Anglican, but also some of the evangelical churches, uh, to be available and to reach out to Hong Kong people. Um, Another group, ESOL providers, and we know Groundwork and others are, are providing ESOL. Some of it's set up and funded for, to help, particularly to help Hong Kongers. But just general ESOL providers, local colleges will be seeing people. And also, of course, if, you ident if you're in one of those boroughs where there is a, a quite concentrated population, you may find there are little groups or little organizations emerging, you know, almost as we speak that you may be able to identify. So hint three, hint four, 
events seems to be a very good way of bringing people together. It's much recommended and organizations like the Hong Kong Umbrella Movement that do a lot of arts events are very keen to link up with uh, non-Hong Kong organizations who can then, um, you can come along, have a stall, be seen, get known, get your known information out there. The fifth hint, interestingly, although people can read English, they don't. And this is something Hong Kong organizations have said. They're not quite sure why it happens, but the advice from Hong Kong organizations is if you want to catch somebody's eye, put some Cantonese in traditional characters, not simplified characters onto your flyers, which you can do with Google Translate. I had a go myself. I don't know if it worked, but I had a go. Um, and then that will catch somebody's eye. And then they, have, they can read the English once you've caught their eye with their flyer. So put some Cantonese in full traditional characters on your publicity or on your website, for example. Number six, be careful with the presentation. There does seem to be quite a bit of stigma around talking about refugees uh, in relation to Hong Kong and also about mental health. So think about talking about in terms of you know, support your friends to feel good rather than come and see us if you need help with your mental health, that kind of badging, which is always an issue with any service, of course. Number seven, Facebook, not TikTok. Be careful with your social media. There are some parts of social media that Hong Kong people are, will not use because they uh, fear the Chinese government can uh, watch them through those forms of social media and TikTok is one of them. But Facebook is extremely widely used. There are several platforms that Hong Kong people use that are not so common in, in uh, use in the UK, um, but Facebook is a strong crossover. And consider um, employing Hong Kong staff or volunteers, of course, um, although we recognize that that might require a degree of, of funding. Music